Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So our today's topic is the call routing on the CUCM. So first I will show you the configuration, like how we can configure these things and the routing part as well, how routing is working. And then we'll go into the definitions of all these things. And then I'll show you on the CUCM, how we can configure all these things. Let's start it. Okay, so call routing, as you can see it on the screen. So from up to down, there will be a routing, how it, how the routing will happen. Like first, whenever you make a call from your IP phone or Jabber or any other soft phone, then it will check the things in the translation pattern first. And then once it found that pattern in the translation pattern, it will move to the directory number. Like if you dial a local number like 2416395, then it will check the pattern. Once it, once it is able to see the translation pattern with the with the same pattern, with the same dial plan, I can say 2XXX something. It's like whenever you're making a call uh, with the two, starting with two numbers, starting with three number, if the pattern, if the dial plan is already there in the pattern, then it will check it and then it will move to the directory number. So if that directory number is of like, uh, uh, like, like you are making an internal call, then it should be under the directory number as well. So once it checks in the directory number, it will just ring that call. It will not go to the route pattern or any other thing. That is the case only for the internal calls. So if you if you make an uh, local call, then it will check the pattern as well first because that pattern should be there. Like if you are making a local call or any other, uh, I can say the long distance call as well or the international call, but pattern should be there first. So it so if you are making a local call like two four six one three five nine, it will check in the translation pattern. It will check in then it will check in the directory number. So once is unable to find it in the directory number, then it will add something like a prefix. Like if you're making a local call uh, on in, in any of your city, like we can just take an example of Delhi. So it will it will just add the 011, that is a prefix. We will add this in the configuration to add this 011 as a prefix so that it can check it on the PSTN. It can check those things in the PSTN as well. So once it's unable to find it in the directory number, then it will check for all other things. So once it added, then it will just move to the, like all these things like on the PSTN and all. So that will, that we will discuss in the route pattern part on this one. Like if you are making an, uh, making an external call, like just take an example of Delhi's number as well, 011. 26151396 something so we'll do the configuration like this uh, like we'll make a pattern as like if we want to make an external call then you should dial a 9 first to make any external call that will be the configuration of my organization just an, just an example so once you press the 9 it will give you a tone so that you can enter the number of the other party so that pattern we will make it in the route pattern because that is an external call. So we will make a route pattern uh, like we can say nine dot add. So add means it will take all the things after nine. Like if you are making a call of five digits number, ten digits number, or even a ten fifteen digits number, then it will it will take all the digits in that route pattern. That nine dot add. Once it hits the route pattern then there will be a configuration of route list as well as gateway. So either you can either you can just put the gateway directly of that particular site from which you are making a call, or you can put a route list as well in the route pattern that I will show you once I'll configure these things. In that route list, you need to mention the route groups. And under that route group, you need to mention the gateways and on the gateways, there will be a ports. So this, so this call routing occurs like this. Once it will hit the translation pattern first, then direct, it will check it in the directory number. If it's an external call, then it will check the route pattern. And then from the route pattern, 
it will go to the route list or the gateway that depends on the configuration and under if if uh, if we mentioned the route list then it will go to the route group and then it will go to the gateway so this is the direction like how the call routing occurs and if you want to do the config configuration then you need to mention the gateway first you need to add the gateway because all the ports on that gateway should be configured so you need to add the gateway first and then you need to add the route groups because in the route group gateway is there and then you need to configure the route list because in that route list you need to add the route groups and then in the route pattern you need to add the add this route list so once you configure the route pattern you need a route list and to configure the route list you need a route group and to configure this route group you need a gateway so once you configure all these things then you can configure this route pattern and then you can mention all these things so there is one more thing like if you are only to one site then you can add the particular gateway here as well like if you want your all calls to go through only that gateway like if you are in delhi or gurugaon so if you are making a call like there is only one site if you are making a call then all all calls should route it through that gateway that particular site gateway only then you can mention directly the gateway here in the route pattern as well no need to add like route list route group and all other things we need these things if we have multiple sites with the multiple gateways and we need the same pattern to be followed on all other sites for making an like lock for making a local or, or a long distance or an international call we need to follow the same pattern so if you need to follow the same pattern then there will be a concept that is slrg that is standard local route group what's the main purpose of that slrg so once once you once you put that route pattern uh, route list and then route group and instead of gateway you need to just mention the uh, like on the route group you just need to mention the local route group that is slrg you don't need to mention the gateway uh, there if you are using slrg because you will mention you will just configure that slrg on the device pool of that particular site so once that that device pool once that phone hits that device pool for that particular site it will take the local gateway of that particular site whether you are at any other different location like you are at gurgaon you are in noida or you are in delhi so once you are at particular site it will hit that particular site's device pool and in that particular site device pool there will be an slrg option and there you will be mentioning the local site gateway i will show you once i'll uh, show it in the lab i will show you all these things and in this uh, in this in this uh, translation pattern you can like add prefix suffix and all these things i will show you once i'll uh, configure all these things so let's let's I, i'll just give you give 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 a brief about all these things let me just uh, uh, show you the definitions of all these things like call routing this is call routing let's let's start with the route group route pattern or a hunt oh sorry this is the route group first so in cucm you can configure this thing by going to the call routing and then you can go to the route slash hunt and then the route group so because we are configuring so we need to configure the route group this is local route group and then uh, then you will be able to see route list route pattern and translation pattern so let's start with this so this route group route group allows you to designate the order in which gateways and trunks are selected so if you remember in our previous slide route group shows the gateways route, after route group it will go to the gate so what it's saying route group allows you to to designate the order in which gateways and trunks are selected like if you are using gateway or you are using say trunk and all these things then so it is saying it allows you to prioritize a list of gateways and ports for outgoing trunk selection if you have multiple gateways like five gateways then it will allow you to prioritize the list means which gateway is at first level which gateway is at second third fourth and fifth 
so let's uh, in the example like for example if you use two long distance carriers you could add a route group you will add a route group so long distance calls to the less expensive carrier are given priority and calls route to the more expensive carrier only if the first trunk is unavailable i hope you yeah, i hope this is clear from this example like if you have two uh, two connections from a different uh, isps one is expensive one is less expensive so we will use the less expensive one first if if all the ports or if the all the ports are already consumed on that particular less expensive uh, less expensive trunk then we will use the next one which is which is more expensive and then we can just give the priority like we can give the priority to the less expensive first and then to the most more expensive so next part would be local route group so in this local route group use we can use the call routing route slash hunt then local route group means to configure this local route so this local route group is a unique name that you assign to a local route group in the local route group names window i will show you in the lab so this local route group names window allows you to add and configure multiple local route group names that you can customize and associate for a given device pool so next would be route list so the same path call routing route slash hunt and the route list menu to configure this so what is route list route list associates a set of route groups in a specified priority same thing here also we are giving the priority of for the route groups because we are configuring the route list here so a route list then associates with one or more route patterns here so the route list we will add that route list in the like one or more we can we can use the same route list in different route patterns as well and determines the order in which those route groups are accessed so a route list can contain only route groups yep each route list should have at least one route group yeah that should be there only then we can configure the route list and each route group includes at least one device that is a gateway such as a gateway that is available so it means once you are going to the route list route group and route uh, and then the gateways then the route list should contain route list contains only route group but it should contain at least one route group and that route group should contain at least one device that is gateway which is available that time and based on device type cucm can choose some or all ports as resource in each route and then you can add a route group to any number of route lists so same route group you can add to the multiple route lists as well you can add a route group to any number and then we have the main thing that is route pattern same path you need to follow call routing route slash hunt and then the route pattern so what is route pattern a route pattern comprises a string of digits an address which we uh, take the example of this one that 9 dot at earlier so route pattern consists comprises a string of digits or an address and a set of associated digit manipulations that route calls to a route list or a gateway which we discussed in our first slide like we can add either a route list or a gateway so we can manipulate the things there as well i'll show you once we use the lab and then we have the translation pattern so the same path you need to follow call routing and then we have translation pattern to configure it so cucm uses translation pattern to manipulate dialed digits before it routes a call like if you are making a call on like if you are using a five digit plan in your environment but we are using e164 standard so five digit plan is just for the ease for the end users like if you are making a call like 51234 so it should ring at 01151 512346 so we are just using the five digits plan but on the back end it it is ringing on the e164 standard it is like using the e164 standard it means it should add something as a prefix or a suffix depends on our configuration to make that five digits as 10 digits so 
we are using translation patterns to manipulate dialed digits before it routes a call and in some cases system doesn't use the dialed number and in 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 other cases the pstn doesn't recognize the dial number yeah, yeah that that happens in some cases system doesn't uh, like use the dial number and in some cases pstn also doesn't recognize the dial number like if you are using five digits plan then obviously pstn doesn't recognize that number because pstn only uses the e164 so yeah you should give pstn as a full 10 digits number if you are making any code so let me uh, let me show you all these things in our lab in our ucm lab i will configure all these things starting with the translation pattern route pattern route list route group gateways and all these things i'll show you all these things in my next lecture that is uh, the lab lecture so i'll give you a brief idea about all these things by showing it like how we can configure all these things i hope you liked you really liked this video of theory part if you really liked it please like share and subscribe and please press the bell icon so that you will be able to receive the notifications of all my upcoming videos thank you